Hello, my name is John Spangle. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, as always, I explain I titled it Underground. I was trying to think of something to name on, on the channel. For a while, I've been doing this for four years, and a while it said John Spangle, and that's kind of boring just having my name. Uh, and I, I thought about title uh, because of uh, present-day China and Iran. I was thinking about them at the time and all the persecution they have, and I was studying and looking at last year where over 10,000 churches were uh, shut down in China. And... Uh, all the persecution of the, the church. We're not here for the seven-year tribulation. And that's a lie being taught by many people. We are we are here uh, working commission for God, expanding the kingdom before our time is up. We are the salt and light of the earth. We are holding back the Antichrist. And once we go, it gets dark. And that's the moment we're in. I was trying to think of a title. I was looking at different things. Uh, I have a couple videos made up, but I didn't, I'm not feeling well. I was taking care of grandkids earlier and and I know it's going to be a late night, so uh, I got to get up early. Got to go to the doctor. Uh, do talk about doing some more testing. Some of my health issues, my memory and, and my speech. I'm having a lot of problems. So uh, I have two videos made up. One is titled "America Christian Nation," and the other one is uh, something about preacher. I can't see it over here. It's a uh, title. If I can, if I can move things around real quick. Ah. Um, the title of it is, uh, I got things in the way, an overview of pre-tribulation uh, arguments or something like that, rapture arguments. And so that's very informative. It gives great detail. And, of course, those videos both will be very long. And so I'm saving them for tonight because this is already my third attempt trying to make a video. Uh, Patches has been bothering me. <laughs> I finally put him in the room. He's got food and water in there and his litter box in the other room. He shut up in there on my bed to relax because he's over here playing what to play. Did the video, went 20 minutes in the video, playing with him. All of a sudden, he wanted to play all over and jump all over me and knock stuff over. So it's he's my my big baby. I got, all my pets are, are uh, my children. And so uh, for years, we've had rescue animals. I don't I never thought about buying an animal because there's many out there in need that people just dump and get rid of. So I've always been someone about rescue animals. Right now, of all the animals we have left, we have four cats. I got uh, Patches, Artie. Artie, that's Patches' sister. And then we have Baby. And that was from a friend of mine over in Indiana. He had a farm. And Kyle's got all of them but one kitten. He, baby survived. She was She's a scrapper. So she got away and hid. And so, uh, of course, we've had them for four or five years now. They're all grown cats. And then I have a fur ball. And so... Uh, they have all different personalities and things. And so I do believe there's a connection with us and our animals. I don't care. I've had, I did a couple videos in the past talking about the rapture of the church. Our animals will go up. I had one man comment saying, well, you don't know what you're talking about. God's here to save people, not animals. God made animals. And it talks about the love of animals. So I truly believe there's a connection. And there, by, by no means, I, I believe they, they uh, uh, go up with us. So, I don't care what, uh, you can't show me in scripture where there doesn't say we don't. Uh, there's too much we have a responsibility to take care of. And we were judged by how we take care of animals. And so, uh, enough said on that. I believe we're in the Psalm 83 war. I'm hearing so much about Ezekiel 38. I just want to note where we're at. It's always about Israel. I believe the church age will end soon. And everything will be left for Israel and the world. The players in the Psalm 83 war... The tents of Edom is modern-day Palestinians in South Jordan. The Ishmaelites is modern-day South Arabia. The Hagreens is modern-day Egyptians. Jabal is modern-day Hezbollah in North Lebanon. Amon is modern-day Palestinians in North Jordan. Amalek is modern-day Sinai. Philista is modern-day Hamas in Gaza. Tyr is a modern-day Hezbollah in South Lebanon. Assyria is modern-day Syria in northern Iraq. And Moab is modern-day Palestinians in central Jordan. They're all involved in one way or another. And I had a man just months ago say, I don't know what I'm talking about. He was mocking me, saying the Egyptians aren't involved with anything. And then we hear about the Philadelphia Corridor, where a lot of stuff is coming through Egypt. So there's a lot of players involved. I don't know, the last time there were some things going on, uh, South, uh, Jordan helped stop the Iran attack into Israel. They, in April, when they did those 300, it was a mixture of rockets and, and drones and everything else. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of deception. Uh, I, I, I was 16 months in a war in Iraq. Uh, 
uh, years, a few years ago, 2004, 2005, uh, Axis Boots on Ground, February 18, 2004, uh, 2003. If I could get, if I get my, my, my memory, 2003, I was there, we were there Boots and Ground, the war started around the 1st of March that year, and then we were there till about June of 2004. That's the last time I went and fought in a war. I got out of the military for a while, and then I just, I believe God just put it on me to go back in. I did in 2009, and I retired, uh, what, six years later? Six, six, eight years later, I'm trying to think. I did a, a six-year enlistment. So that put me at uh, 2015, yeah, eight years later, because I did a six-year enlistment, and then I did two more, a two-year enlistment after that. And so... Actually, I was eight years in the Air Force, prior service full time. I got out. Uh, I served Desert Storm in the Air Force. I got out, and then I went to Army National Guard. But I did a year at a time for five years, uh, just messing around because you could do that then. And so uh, uh, I did it for five years, and uh, then there's like John, you coming back in? Let's get more than a year at a time out of you. So I did a six year enlistment, then later I did two years, and then I retired at fifty one all kinds of back trouble and things like that and they didn't want me to retire they wanted me to be an instructor at the s3 shop up at battalion but i was like uh no I, if i can't get out there and physically do the stuff with young men anymore that's the way i train you know the only thing the young guys could beat me on beat me on is, is uh, the runs two mile runs because you have to time limit our endurance runs you go do an endurance run it's your own pace you just got to do the 3.5 miles or five miles wherever we did their favorite ones. We made sure there's a lot of hills in those runs. I just set my grandpa pace and go. I just didn't get, because my back get the speed, uh, you know, I struggled. It took me 18 minutes to do two miles. You know, I could only get that first mile done around eight minutes. Then by the time I get the second mile, I've gained two more, you know, it took me two minutes longer. So I kept it 18 minutes. That last run I did, I went, I think I had to do it uh, 19 like 1930 or something like that. I just beat it by a few seconds. One of the young guys came up and said, you got to run it in. You almost, oh, then I sprinted, you know, because I was just, my back pain, it was there. I was fighting it because I would always do my push-ups and then my sit-ups. Then after the sit-ups, the back pain would settle in. i go to the bathroom, sometimes throw up. <laughs> That's a graphic. That's what it is. You deal with pain. Then I go out and do my two-mile run. So uh, that last year, I was hurt even doing push-ups. So, but I generally average 60 to 62 push-ups in two minutes. And my sit-ups were 58, 57 to 59. And then I've run an 18-minute two mile. But that last time I, I was struggled and I just did it in 19-something. <laughs> I slowed down quite a bit that last year. It is what it is. I pushed it to the limit and now I'm paying the price. And so uh, if I had to do it over again, absolutely. Uh, not the idea of being in a war and stuff like that, but being with serving with the people. I don't like the government. I don't like the government's doing. We're an ungodly nation. That's why I'm doing the video uh, next day or two titled America, a Christian Nation. I don't remember if I mentioned that. Yeah, I think I mentioned my two videos. Sorry, uh, my memory. And this is the third time trying to make a video today. So uh, I got a lot going on. and uh, But as I see it, we're in a Psalm 83 war. Whether there's a time of gap where the war is going to seem to calm down for a while. Wars last a while. You know, World War One, World War Two, they were over four years apiece. You know, we've been fighting in Iraq for many years. We're still not totally out of Iraq. So, even though we pulled out of Afghanistan, the United States is not a godly nation. I learned that a long time ago from my experiences. And uh, we're pushed that it is. <laughs> By far, we are not. That doesn't mean there's not godly people here. God's not used America for many things and done things. But America... Never was a godly nation. It was always a, a nation of deceit and deception. We were involved with so we are involved with. If you research, we're involved with over 150 mil, in our history of military coups in different countries that we are involved with. You know, back in this what was it 70s or whenever when Carter was president, uh, we joined with Britain to uh, get the Shah of Iran in position over in Iran. Then we screwed that up, and there was a revolu revolution, and then that Ayatollah Khomeini took over over there. You know, we were trying to get someone in there to be our yes man. So that's the way America, America does. So don't be too too friendly. You know, everybody's talking about the election coming up. There's bad Democrats. 
like the Republicans are the good guys, and they are not. They're both evil. Uh, and then they go into this, well, Trump will save us. He's our godly man. Trump is not a godly man. Uh, he has anything I've seen up there with Trump. He's had Paula White up there doing that. We are not to have follow women as spiritual leaders at all. That's ungodly, First Tessal, First Timothy. So uh, don't be fooled by many things, you know, but people are manipulated. I went to leadership school in the military. We had classes about this, how to manipulate people and how easy. They, and I learned, opened my eyes to many things that goes on in this country. It's just unreal how people are manipulated through TV and different everything else, media and, and different things like that. I remember doing ComSec security missions, uh, briefings myself, giving these briefings. <coughs> so the information's out there. And so that's why it is. And we're in the age of deception. And if you think, well, it's just now in the church. We, we get this thing with people with church, and it's like, well, we're just now things are starting to be deceived in the church. Absolutely not. Things have been deceived from church from the first century. That's why uh, Paul wrote the letter to Thess First and Second Thessalonians to Thessalonica because they already had people back then twisting when he, after he left preaching there. So the apostasy has always been there, people. It's just now not happening. It's always been there. And so we have a lot of false teachers, a lot of liars today. You have a lot of uh, Joel Richardson's all over YouTube talking about how there's no pre-tribulation rapture and teaching going to different churches, privately teaching the false doctrine. If that man does not change, he will not go to heaven. He's denying Jesus Christ coming for his bride. And that's what happens when you deny the pre-tribulation rapture. That's why I give these out, to be prepared. Deny this, uh, you're damned to hell. Period. There is no uh, if and what's about it. We're, the church is purified solely by the complete work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Nothing else. We don't have to go through anything. We have the gift of grace. It says so in his words. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 through 10. For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship. He is working through us, creating Christ Jesus unto good works. We are to work. We are not lazy Christians. I had someone comment to me, well, lazy Christians go to heaven. Absolutely not. And there's no such thing as a lazy Christian. They're not born again. Same thing with a carnal Christian. A worldly Christian is damned to hell. Which God talks about Jesus Christ and the good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Have an understanding, people. I put this out not too long ago. I, I had someone that got after me a while back on my channel months ago, like six months ago, a man of a different channel, come up there and said some stuff, then start talking about other people. Uh, don't listen to John when he's teaching it, and just attack my channel. Why? Because I said someone can know the will of God and still go to hell. It says that's not in the scripture. So when I try to show him the scripture, he wouldn't listen to it and told everybody, I don't back anything up with Scripture. I back everything up with Scripture. I don't come up here and say I'm a holier thou person. I know the experts and everything. I'm not a minister. I'm not even a teacher. I'm a man who loves God. I see all the, the mixed communications or misunderstandings, so I show things to you. You are to take this. I expect you to come here, take what I give you, and study. It's not just to listen to my words. I'm not... I'm not very charismatic or anything like that. I know there's not a lot of subscribers here, but I leave it to God to bring people here and to deal with. This is not about John Spangle, and therefore uh, I'm big about that. A person can believe in God and not be saved. James 2, 19. A person can pray to Jesus and not be saved. Matthew 7, 22 through 23. A person can prophesy in Jesus' name and not be saved. Matthew 7, 22 through 23. A person could do wonderful works in Jesus' name and not be saved. Matthew 7, 22-23. A person can have zeal to make proselytes for God and not be saved. Matthew 23, 15. A person can have zeal for God and not be saved. Romans 10, 2-3. A person can be very interested in Jesus Christ and not be saved. Matthew 19, 16-22. A person can profess to know God and not be saved. Titus 1-16. through A person can follow Jesus for a while and not be saved. John 6, 66. A person can serve Christ as an apostle and not be saved. John 6, 70. A person can even believe on Jesus' name and not be saved. John 2, 23 through 25. That's where a lot of the, you know, we argue with, oh, that's not a true statement. The reason the people in John 2, 23 through 25 were not saved is because they did not believe on Jesus as their Lord and Savior from sin. 
but as their worldly Messiah who would feed them and rescue them from their political enemies. And you can look at John 6, 26. Jesus came to separate families. Luke 12, 51 through 58. He came uh, not in peace, not in harmony. He says so in his own words. He came to uh, call strife between father and son, son and father, daughter against daughter, uh, daughter against mother, mother against daughter, daughter-in-law against mother-in-law, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law. Man's own, own uh, well, I'm about to read you what, what he says. Uh, just the best way. Let's look at uh, Luke uh, 12, 35 through 40. That's not the verse I'm looking for. And I apologize. This is how prepared I am. Uh, so let's just go here real quick in God's word. Let's, let's take it where I'm trying to mean. Luke 12. I used to be able to just throw things out in the Bible, and I have issues with my memory. And this is uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. I'm sorry. My memory is really bad. I used to do things as a teenager. I loved to we'd go to different churches and compete on, on Bible studies and things like that. And I just I can't uh, do it anymore, and that bothers me. Christ comes to divide people on spiritual matters. This is what this is about. I am come to send fire on the earth, and what will if I it be already kindled? But I have a baptiz baptism to be baptized with, and I am straight until it be accomplished. Suppose ye that I come to give peace on earth, and tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five in one house divided, three against two, and two against three. The father shall be divided against the son, and the son against the father, the mother against the daughter, and the daughter against the mother, the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So he, he came, he's come to divide people on spiritual matters, and that's what we're at today. And that's the reason why I want to make a point in reading that, is the fact that I got people in my family that's not saved. That dear to me. My oldest son is always saying, Dad, uh, the rapture takes place. I'll come to understand, and I'll, I'll come, I'll study. Because right now he says the Bible's a, bit, a fable. And I press this out so much to people. I've done a lot of videos about this. And I do this to stress the people of the left behind. There's three groups of left behind people. There's a group that's heard the gospel or are left behind. that have not followed the gospel. There's a group of people that will, never will. They're the unbelievers and stay unbelievers. But they it's not whether they, they, they've heard or not heard. And then you had, because uh, some are not taught. Because during the time <coughs> of the first three and a half years of, uh, of the seven-year tribulation, I've talked about the witnesses. They're going to witness to people. That's the time end of the uh, end of the Gentiles. So they'll have an uh, uh, evangelizing to people, a witness. So for three and a half years, they'll have the opportunity to come to Christ. And the whole year severed late at the year it's tribulation is for the Jewish people. Twelve million Jews on the face of the earth that will come to know who their Messiah is. Only one third of them will be saved. Many are going to be damned because they don't accept the truth. So for those people who have heard the gospel, I stress it so much because it's so misused. They're like, well, that's apostasy or no, that's not. We already have apostasy. And that's Second uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10 through 12. It talks about the Antichrist, and then it goes into, with all deceitfulness and of unrighteousness in them that perish. These are the ones that were left behind after the rapture of the church. Why? Because they received not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. They didn't receive the gospel. They didn't accept it in their lives. And for this cause, God shall send the strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. So those people left behind, like I had one gentleman put a, a comment where he left, he's got stuff in his locker for his people left behind, his co-workers. That's nothing. The left behind information is nothing. That's not sowing a seed because they are deluded by God. They will not come out. You're saying God can, you can come out of God's delusion. Absolutely not. I don't care what they put in front of me. Remember the, the, Rich man and the beggar that died, 
Rich man went to hell. Beggar went to uh, Abraham's bosom. So he asked Abraham to tell that uh, beggar to dip his hand in the water and give it to him. And Abraham said, I can't do that. There's a chasm between us. A big gulf. And then he asked Abraham, can you go up and tell his four brothers where he was? Because he had four brothers that were living like he was. And he's like, if they don't listen to the words of Jesus, there's nothing I can show them. That's what's going to happen to these left behind. And a lot of people chastise me and get after me for making a statement. And I have a lot of people. I made a video just too long ago about this. I talked about two other men that have YouTube channels. Uh, Tyler2434 and Tom Coat of Watchmen by the River because they did a special. They did two or three videos and they, they were talking about leaving letters for left behind. So I, I use them as an example. There's a lot of people using the heart to guide them. All right. But the truth of the matter, the left behind letters are nothing. You're not appeasing those people left behind. You're appeasing yourself. That's the truth. You're appeasing your heart. Because you're like, I'm leaving this up for so-and-so I love. We're not to do that. Not many people will stress that to you. They misuse God. You know, they don't they don't put the truth out there. And then people come in and say, well, you're harsh or different things or I'm wrong. No, just as I say, people are butthurt. Why? Because they're being led by the flesh. And that's why I stress this. Look at Lot's wife. God shows us things. Lot's wife. When, when the angels came, they told Lot the night before they were going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. And there's like five, there's five cities together that they destroyed. And they told Lot, go talk to your sons-in-laws. That's plural. So there's at least two or more. You could have three or four sons-in-laws. You could have three or four other daughters that were married. We don't know. Don't say. He went to them. They mocked him. He was reluctant to leave the next day. So much the angels grabbed him by the arm and took him, his wife, and their two unmarried children, daughters, out. They weren't children. They were grown women, but they weren't married yet. Took them out and were told not to look back. Lot's wife looked back. She yearned for what was left. What happened to her? She turned to a pillar of salt for an example. Or not to look your back or look for those. They're, look, I, I've got sons, you know, I got a son. I got a daughter I question about the way she's living. A brand new son-in-law. I know he's not safe. My wife, I, I, I deal with a lot of things with her. She's got problems, but there's enough to know. I don't believe she's saved. And I'm not saying it just because we're separated. I'm still taking care of her on, on financial matters. But there's enough there. I got people in my own family who are not saved. And so, this is what you deal with, your reality. This is where we're at in this moment in time. As I said, these, these last moments of today, this is where we're at. We're in the last days before we go up. And they're going to be left behind. You love them, you care for them. Talk to them now. If they don't want to listen, I you know. One time my son was almost threatening to hit me. Because I wouldn't get quiet. I was like, fine. I walked away that day. I haven't talked since. And he knows where I stand on it. I'm not going to keep standing there and talking and talking. And a lot of people be like, well, you need to keep. No, he knows my stance. He knows I make videos. He knows where I stand. He has the opportunity to come here. He has the opportunity. I pray for him all the time. Uh, Jesus Christ, in his hometown, he couldn't get people saved. He couldn't do it. It says so in Scripture. But that doesn't mean someone else can't come to him, hopefully, in time. So I'm constantly praying about these people. I'm praying. But there comes a time when God's going to, when God does judgment, just like Solomon and Gomorrah, there was a time of judgment, just like the flood on the earth. Earth, there was a time. Well, at that time, it was too far. Only eight people got saved. Only eight people didn't have mixed DNA. The rest were lost. They were so evil. But there was a time before that. Remember, Noah preached for 100 years. So I believe even though it wound up being just eight people on the ark, there's an opportunity for some people that maybe at some point didn't have mixed DNA or something because that's 100 years is more than a generation. Well, back then they were hundreds, hundred years old, so that's a little different. But still, there's time. Well, once they got to the time where time of judgment, that's it. It's judgment. And that's that's what this is all about. It's judgment. They've gone to their, their they're at that moment. Now judgment is coming on this earth. This is it. Get them saved. Left behind. It's nothing. You know, it's nothing. 
Those people can read anything you got. A, a heartwarming letter from you. That means nothing. That's why I hate funerals. I do. I've had so many in the military. I've had so many people. Uh, because funerals are not for the dead. It's for the living. You know, we, we uh, uh, mourn, grieve for those we love. Well, that's what this is. They're not coming to God. You go, that's it. Jesus warned many times about the pre tribulation rapture in Scripture. Matthew 24, verses 36, 39, 42, 44, 50. Matthew uh, chapter 25, verse 13. Mark 13, 32, 33, 35, 37. Luke 12, 40, 12, 21, 34, 36. If I just said that before, I'm sorry. It's, like I said, it's my third video, so I couldn't remember if I mentioned those verses or not. But many times over, he warned, you don't know the day or hour. Watch and be ready. That's what this is about. We're about to go up. This is it. This is game time. Don't listen to those people that say we got time. They're liars. Luke 25, 35 through 40. Let your loins be girded back and your lights burning. Ye yourselves like unto men that wait for the Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may be open to him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so blessed are those servants. And know this, that if the good men of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up through. Be ye therefore ready also for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when you think not. Parable of the testing of servants. I'm, I'm going to talk, give you two parables. Luke 12, 42 through 48. And the Lord said, Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord shall make ruler of his household to give them the portion of meat in due season? Due season is season what? The time of the rapture. Meat is meat of the scripture. We have milk. As a born again Christian, you have the milk of the scripture. We have learning and understanding. There's a point where you mature and become meat of the scripture and have understanding. That's what he's talking about. They're talking about pre tribulation rapture doctrine. Blessed is that servant, and his Lord and me come and shall find so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he hath. But, and if that servant say in his heart, the Lord delayeth his coming. There's no pre-tribulation rapture. It's pre rat mid, post. These people teaching this. And shall begin to beat the men, servants, and maidens. In other words, argue, fight, beat, same thing, similar. And to eat and drink and be drunk. In other words, be worldly. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him, and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him asunder and will point him his portion with the unbelievers. The servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did not commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever is much is given of him, and of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask more. So you can know the will of God and not follow it. Absolutely. I just told you some verses there about the uh, wherever that was, I explained to you. Especially in Matthew, uh, was it chapter 7, verse 22 through 23. So you can know the will of God and not go. You can be active in church, baptized, a lot of Bible studies you go to. You can be a pastor of the church and not go to heaven. Another warning by Jesus Christ is Matthew 24, 36 through 51. This is after the all ended, the all but discord. He talks about second coming. We come down with him. It talks about the rapture, like I talked about, all the Armageddon, the elect. He sends out the elect. Yes, that's a rapture. That's not the rapture of the church, understanding many raptures. That's the rapture bringing everybody to Armageddon. And then it talks about the uh, fig tree generation, the last generation of Israel, which they are in right now. Now it gets into this. Very similar to what I just read to you about the testing of servants. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming Son of Man be. For as in the days of Noah were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark. And knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one shall be taken, the other left. It's a clue. It's a harvest time. But guess what? There's four harvests in Israel. You're a harvest, so it don't matter 
there's no way of knowing which harvest it is. So I know I before tried to guess what harvest, and I was wrong. It was immature. Now, more mature Christian, understand that's not how you do that. We won't know. Watch therefore, for you know not what your hour your Lord doth come. We know the second coming. Seven years after Antichrist signs the covenant with many, three and a half years after the two witnesses are dead and uh, raptured up, because that's the same day that the Antichrist goes into the, the temple and, it's, and desecrates it. So we know the day of the second coming. We're coming down with him the second coming. The day, the world doesn't know because they don't pay attention, but we know the day of the second coming. We just don't know the hour. Well, this is, you don't know the day or the hour. That's the rapture. He, we don't, he doesn't come on earth. I had so many guys, you know, well, there's no two second comings. <coughs> Who said there is? Scripture doesn't. Jesus Christ comes to the church uh, in the clouds. He doesn't touch on earth. That's not a second coming. A second, there's only one second coming. That, that's men trying to preach things that they shouldn't be preaching. That's exactly what ungodly men try to be godly. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known and what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and not, would not have suffered the house to be broken up. Therefore, you hear that again. Therefore, be also ready for in such an hour as you think not the Son of Man come. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord and made ruler over his household to give them what? Meat in due season. Just like he said before in the previous verses. Meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. He's blessed because he's expanding the kingdom of God. As again, now listen to the other servant. But, and if the evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming. There's no pre-tribulation rapture. I believe this is for everybody out there teaching, preaching against pre-tribulation rapture. Everybody puts it on YouTube. That, that all they know is there's no pre-tribulation rapture. Or, even those people like it doesn't matter, it matters. Sound doctrine matters. And I'll read that to you later if you need to. And shall begin to smite his fellow servants. Like Sor says, beat and argue. This is the same thing. Argue against this. That's not true. And to eat and drink with the drunken. In other words, you're living for the world. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and an hour that he's not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And that always refers to hell. Always refers to going to have weeping and gnashing of teeth. And there's a couple of verses in the Bible that says, welling and gnashing of teeth. What's that about? That's about going to hell. Another warning, Luke 21, 34 through 36. I'm just on these warnings from Jesus Christ himself. And take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, and so that day come upon you unawares. For as a snare it shall come upon all them that dwell on the face of the earth. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be counted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So a lot of people say, well, it's escapism. Absolutely. We are not here for the seven-year tribulation. Jesus Christ himself is telling you. He's showing you. Are you going to listen to him or not? Um, a lot of people put out there that, oh, we got to. What? When you say that we have to be here for the seven-year tribulation, you're saying what Jesus Christ did on the cross was not good enough for us. Jesus Christ gave us two promises. John 14, 1 through 3, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me, for in my Father's house and many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Revelation 3, 10 through 11. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the earth to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that for that fast that thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Paul refers to when he when he uh, before he leaves, he refers to the crown of righteousness. He's earned it, and he says that's for other people. Who? Those that are anxiously waiting the rapture. Jesus Christ gave six parables about pre tribulation rapture. I read two of them to you. Parable ten virgins, Matthew twenty five one through thirteen. Parable of talents, Matthew twenty five fourteen through thirty. Parable of the marriage feast, Matthew twenty two one through fourteen. Parable of testing of servants. That's one of mine. I just read to you, Luke twelve forty two through forty eight. Parable of the Great Supper, Luke 14, 16 through 27. Parable of the Long Journey, Luke 19, 11 through 27. So you can see Jesus Christ himself taught the pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. 431 A.D. to 1500 A.D. Uh, well, the 431 A.D., the Council of Ephesus convened, led by the Catholic Church. 
to what? Outlaw pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. And call it heretical and punish people by death for teaching it. And all books were banned, I mean, were burned or rewritten at that time. They tried their best to hide the truth from you. But the truth has come through the years. We, we've got documentation. But from 431 AD to 1500 AD, the Catholic Church itself persecuted many, martyred many, mainly burning them at the stake for teaching pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. And you always hear John Nelson Darby start this in around 4, 1840. This pre-tribulation rapture wasn't taught before. It was taught before. It was taught by the early church fathers. It taught the imminency of Christ. That's the reason for their letters of First and Thessalon, uh, First and Second Thessalonians. Because when they left, they tried to already then. I'll read to you in a minute. They tried to uh, persuade people not to uh, uh, pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. I mean, they they try to say that uh, they thought the rapture had already happened. So it's a misconception even back then. But Margaret McDonald's statement. I love this. I hear so much about Margaret McDonald. It's like I talk about Joel Richardson so much because he's all over YouTube. He has a big ministry where he's pushing the, the falsehood that the pre-tribulation rapture is not truth. He is wrong. I think his stance is more pre-wrath. He is wrong there. He's misleading people, sending people to hell. Exactly. He will go himself if he does not change. So you pray for him. Margaret McDonald. What was her true statement? Here is an excerpt from Margaret McDonald's own handwritten account of her 1830 rapture revelation that was included in Robert Norton's memoirs of James and George McDonald of Port Glasgow, published in 1840. James and George were her brothers, and they were leaders in the Pentecostal work in Scotland. The account is found on pages 171 through 178. "'Tis only those that are alive in him that will be caught up to meet him in the air. I saw the people of God in an awfully dangerous situation. Many about to be deceived and fall. How will the wicked be revealed with all power and signs and lying wonders, so that if it were possible, the very elect will be deceived? This is the fiery trial which is to try us. It will bear the purging and purifying of the real members of the body of Jesus. The love of many will wax cold." Now shall the awful sight of a false Christ be seen, for it is with all deceitfulness and wrong righteousness he will work. This is particularly the nature of the trial through which those are to pass who will be counted worthy to stand before the Son of Man. The trial of the church is from the Antichrist. It is being filled with the Spirit that we shall be kept. This will fill us to enter into the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's not even a pre-tribulation rapture doctrine, yet they say this 15-year-old Scottish lass started all this pre-tribulation rapture doctrine. Does it really matter? whether you believe in the pre-tribulation rapture or not. I mean, doctor. Whether it be pre, post, mid, or uh, whatever, tribulation. Does it really matter? We're all brothers in Christ. doesn't matter. Many in Christendom argue doctrine divides, so we need to forget doctrine and just unite around the love of Jesus. They say Jesus prayed for harmony among all of his people, and doctrine just hinders fellowship. Now, I just read to you uh, in Luke about how Jesus divides now, spiritual matters. So that's going against what people are saying. So what would be the believer's, the believer's answer to the com such comments? You know, whether doctrine matters? Well, we're told in 1 Timothy 4, 1. Answers the question as to whether doctrine matters. Now, the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter time some shall depart of faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So that's what you're listening to right now. When people miss teach you on things and they and, and you, they lead you away from the rapture, the, the uh, pre-tribulation rapture of the church, they are leading you away from God. You are denying Jesus Christ, <coughs> and this is where we're at right now. As we see everything getting bad, getting worse, and you're hearing things and and everything going on, and you're hearing about Trump and Harris and here in America, and you're hearing other things and just everything, realize it's going to get more chaotic. But we have security. Once you're saved, you're always saved. Don't listen to people say you are not. Those are liars, deceivers. We can make mistakes. Excuse me. We're the body of Christ. Children of God. Once you become born again, you belong to God. ABCs of salvation. Admit you're a sinner. Romans 3.23. Believe Jesus died and rose again to pay for your sins. Romans 5.8. Confess Jesus Lord of your life, putting your total trust in Jesus is your only hope of salvation. Romans 10, 9. We make God God of our life. All right? That's what matters. And so, 
this is where we're at. This is the point where we're at in our lives. Uh, as I said, uh, I'm looking at my note here. These last moments of today, this is where we're at. We were about to go up. So I stress so much, get those people saved. Don't be looking for the rapture of the church to date. You ain't going to find it. Don't listen to those men say they found it because they're liars. And why would you go to a man and says that God showed me something? Well, God showed me this and God showed me that. Just because someone says God showed him means nothing. I never come up here and say God show me. I'm up here. I'm studying God's word. And I'm showing you what I'm looking at. You have to decide on your own. I will not do that. Uh, I have many people. I've had a comment. I had a comment. Someone not too long ago. God showed me the truth about the rapture. And you're wrong. Well, no. Uh, you're not listening to God. And so, uh, Satan is very deceptive. And how we know is to question certain things and to use the scriptures. That's what God gave us. You have the born again Christian, you're, you belong to God. No one can take you from God. Doesn't mean you're not going to make mistakes. I had someone that made the comment a while back well, if someone's backsliding and the rapture takes place, they won't go up. Well, two types of people backslide. One that's not born again, you're going to backslide. A born again Christian, you're learning, so they might backslide on some stuff. But God knows what's His. He will come. He is coming for His. It's just remember, you have rewards and no rewards. That's the beam of seat judgment. That happens right before the marriage feast. There's a gap of time, I believe. The rapture of the church is a gap of time, then the seven year tribulation. It's not one right into another. That gap of time, don't know how long it is. That during that time, we had the beam of seat, a judgment. We come before Christ. We get rewards and no rewards. During that time, that's Amos chapter 8, verses uh, 11 through 12. Well, 10 through 12 or 11 through 12. I have to look at the, see if I can see it real quick. 11 through 12. It talks about when God will send a famine on the earth in the future time. Not a famine of food and water, but this famine of this, the word of God cannot be found. There's some areas it's not going to be found. Everything with AI. Anything with true Christianity and stuff are going to be gone. They're going to be pushing one world religion. So the truth of God will be gone. And it cannot be found. Remember, during the seven-year tribulation, you have 144,000 Jewish men evangelizing. I told you about the two witnesses. They're raptured. Remember, for three and a half years, they'll be, they'll be a witnessing. And then for the whole seven years, it talks about in Revelation, an angel flying to and fro uh, the earth, spreading the gospel. So it's going to be gone. So when's this period of time when there's no one's people? Some people are struggling in certain areas on the earth about the gospel. It's during that time when it's the time of chaos. That time we're gone. It's dark. It's getting darker, darker, and darker. And then before everything takes place, I've had someone comment not too long ago, "We're in the seven year tribulation." No, we're not. And I had someone comment, "The seals have already stood. The judgment seals and all this has already happened and taken place." No, it has not. It's not that bad yet. You have to understand certain times and judgments, it's going to kill multiple people. And when one judgment, one fourth of the earth is gone at that just one, one uh, judgment time. So I have to go back and study what's what and have it that much. I don't dwell too much on during that period of time. I'm not going to be there. Why dwell on it? Why teach it? Why talk about it if you're not going to be there? Get people saved before. Now, I talk about to show how bad it's going to get, but I'm not really stressing about I'm not looking for the Antichrist. You're not going to know who the Antichrist is. We're salt of the earth. We're holding the Antichrist back. We're working the Great Commission. Once we go, the Antichrist comes and is revealed. So, you're not going to find the Antichrist. You're not even going to have a hint of who the Antichrist is. I've heard it all. Uh, you don't know. Not a single person knows. And there's no product. I get it when you have these places on YouTube. Well, God showed me this. God showed me that. I'm a modern day prophet. You're a modern day liar. There's no new reason for a modern day prophet. We have the word of God. Now, prophecy is going to take place. Yes, and different things will take place during the seven year tribulation. Israel talks about their daughter, Israel's daughters and sons are going to be prophesying again. They're going to have visions. Right. That's during the seven-year tribulation. That is not right now. We have the scripture of God. We are the church age. There's distinction between the church 
in Israel. Don't listen to people say there's not. Go and study on your own. Question them. Question me. Because you go and study if you question. When you look at things I show you, uh, what's he showing me about 13 raptures? Go read and study on your own. Uh, what's about you know, I, Elijah never saw death? Go re research. Go read the whole chapter uh, 6 of Isaiah. Read about Ezekiel. Research about Jesus. When I talked about ascension, and I talked about his rapture later. Look at that. Look at everything I've got here. I've shown you. All the scripture about Paul's doctrine. You know, everything else. Go look. Study. You're expected to. You're not expected to be led by someone. Absolutely not. You're not expected to go to a church and listen to the teachings of someone there. All that you might use them for guidance as a mentor to learn. If they are correct, you are to make sure. But you are to study on your own. Not to have someone do it for you. You're not born again. Because you'll be looking for God. You'll be looking for answers. I look forward to the day we're in heaven. And I look forward to meeting brothers, sisters in Christ. Said, hey, John, I, I listened. I, I took what you had and I studied. That's what I'm looking for. And so, till then, God bless you. Thank you.